What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show how you can create some CG debris blowing around as if it's in a dust storm environment. This effect is super simple. We're going to be using a basic particle system, modeling some CG debris, and then affecting its movement using a basic vortex force field. I used this exact same technique about five years ago when I released this uh, helicopter dust wave effect on one of my previous channels. And uh, as you can see here, there's a variety of CG debris that we've added to our scene, as well as a dust wave at the bottom of our helicopter here and some live action dust as well. Um, here's just the short breakdown of this effect. You can see we've added some CG dust here. And I've actually made a video on how you can create this CG dust for a helicopter dust wave in a previous video. So I'll put a link to that in the description below but in this specific tutorial we're just going to be showing how you can create the CG paper and plastic debris flying around our scene here so this effect is super useful in a variety of situations you don't have to use it for a helicopter dust wave however the inspiration behind this effect was actually the visual effects breakdown to this 2001 film uh, Black Hawk Down and it's actually interesting if you watch the behind the scenes of the visual effects of this film Black Hawk Down you can actually see how they've created a lot of the effects in the film and for 2001 it's pretty crazy the amount of CG effects that they've added pretty seamlessly into the film this is definitely an interesting documentary to watch and and uh, really shows how far visual effects have come because you know this is a top-of-the-line visual effects studio doing it in 2001 now we have uh, of course our free software blender and we can do effects way more advanced than the ones used in Black Hawk Down for free on our computers but I just want to show a few different moments here that I used as reference for my version of it they 3d track the scene first now they add the CG dust element here in a second you know, not particularly complex dust here. Obviously, this is a pretty low resolution video, but it doesn't seem like the dust was particularly high res, but since it's moving so quickly, it doesn't really matter that much. And then finally, they've added the CG debris that's uh, pretty close to the effect that we're going to create in this video. So just a short little bit of inspiration for you guys. I recommend you check out that documentary. It's uh, pretty interesting what they've done in 2001 and we can do a lot more now. So anyways, guys, without further ado, let's get started here. Uh, this is going to be sort of the final effect we're going to create. So pretty awesome. And now let's get started from scratch here. So I'll create a new file here. I'll go ahead and delete everything in our scene as usual. And now the first thing I want to do is create a floor for our physics. So our particles have something to interact with and bounce off of in case they descend past the grid here. So I'll press shift A, I'll add a mesh plane, kind of scale this up a little bit. And then I want to go to the physics properties tab and I'm going to make this a collision objects for our particle system. And now we're going to add the particle system that's going to instance our CG debris. So I'll go ahead and press shift A, I'll add another. We're going to use a plane in this instance, but you can pretty much use any uh, emitter that you like. So I'll go ahead and just add a plane here. I'll bring this up. Now we'll add a particle system to this plane. So I'll go to our particle tab. I'll press the plus button and right off the bat, we'll get something like this. And it's not really what we want. We want to adjust a few of our settings here. I will leave the gravity on, but I want to actually have all of our particles start off at frame one. So it's not emitting particles through its entire life. It just sort of creates them. And also our lifetime of the particles is only at 50. So we want to increase that to whatever the length of your timeline is. So maybe I'll just go 250 for the sake of this tutorial. So now our particles are continuing to live on all the way to frame 250. That should be pretty good. I'm going to decrease the number of particles to something like uh, we'll try 450. Obviously you can play around with this depending on how much CG debris you'd like. And I also want to add a little bit of damping whenever our particles bounce off of our ground plane here. They're really bouncing off and going just right back to their same spot here. So I'll select our ground plane and under the physics properties, I'm just going to increase the damping a bit, maybe 0.5. All right, something like that, maybe a little bit less. I'll do like 0.3 maybe. You can kind of experiment with that. There we go. And this should be pretty good. Now it's time to add our actual force field. I'll go ahead and scale that plane up a little bit. We have our particles. Might just scale it up and I'll, maybe I'll just bring this down a little bit closer to our plane here. All right, uh, one more thing I want to do before we add our force field is I want to go to our particle properties and I actually want to under render I don't want to show the emitter, so I don't want to actually render out the plane here. I just want to render the particles himself. So I'll deselect show emitter, and I'll also do that in the viewport display as well. So we can just see our particle system here. 
All right, so now it's time to create the movement for these particles by adding a vortex force field to the scene. So I'll press Shift A and I'll go down here to force field and I'll add the vortex force field. And right off the bat, it's a pretty nice visual of this force field. You can see that it's just creating a force that spins around counterclockwise here. So you can see if we play our scene, what our particles are doing. So right off the bat, we're getting something pretty interesting here. It's not quite powerful enough yet. So we'll select it. We'll go to our physics properties tab here and we can adjust a variety of settings here. The main two you're going to want to adjust is your strength and your inflow here. I'm gonna leave these other ones alone, but you can definitely play around with the noise amount if you want some more variation in the strength. Um, and you can also play around with the seed to add some randomness as well. But these two settings should suffice. So you can see if I increase the strength here, it's gonna add a lot more force on these particles till we get something pretty crazy. So at this point, what you wanna do is you want to find the balance between strength and inflow. So inflow is going to control, you can see if I hover over this setting here, controls the inward component of the vortex force. So if I increase this, for example, all the way up to 10, our particles go straight to the center of our force field and are just rotating around and spinning on that singular axis. So obviously we don't want this effect, but the higher we increase the strength, the more we actually want the inflow setting to pull in our particles to the center of our force field. So you can also make the inflow setting negative so that the particles are pushed out further away from the center of our inflow, which is actually what we're going to do in this specific tutorial. But essentially you have to adjust these two settings until you get a result that you like. So I'm going to maybe try our strength at five since it's a bit heavy. I'm gonna bring down the inflow to something like one for now. Let's see what we get here. So we get something like this and our particles are going toward the center, still a little bit too much here. So I'm going to, like I mentioned, make the inflow negative. So we'll go negative uh, 1.6, I think. That should probably be pretty good. And now you can see we're getting a little bit closer to the effect that I showed you guys at the beginning of the video. So if we wanna pull these particles a little bit further in, we can either decrease the strength so that they're not being spun as quickly so they don't go quite out as much, or we can actually increase the inflow a little bit. But I might just make the strength four. Try this out really quick. That's looking pretty good. The balance here is really you don't want you know to lose your particles. So maybe we want to increase the inflow a little bit to negative 1.4. And now our particles are staying a little bit closer. We can also increase the size of our ground plane here so they don't go falling off into infinity there. All right, this is looking pretty good for some CG debris. Maybe I'll make the inflow a little bit less here. It doesn't push our particles quite that far out. All right, this is looking pretty good. So you kind of have to balance these two settings here to get something that you like. One more thing I want to do is I want to rotate this force field so our particles aren't just spinning around on the Z axis here. We want to give it a little bit of variation and you can actually animate your vortex force field as well if you want to play around with how the particles are moving. So for example, if I press spacebar here, I can actually move this and animate it if I really want to. For the sake of this tutorial, we're going to leave it stationary, but one thing I want to do is just rotate it a little bit so that our particles have a little bit more randomness to them. So now you can see already, we're getting that kind of dust storm CG debris effect that could work pretty nicely for some CG debris. And I'll select our particle system as well, and I'll just bring it up here, and maybe I'll just rotate it slightly as well to add some more randomness. Now we're getting a pretty cool little effect here. You can see the further we get along in our timeline, the more crazy it gets. So this is again, just kind of a balancing act with your forces here. I might just decrease this number to negative 0.5. So now our particles are staying a little bit more closer to the center of our scene here. That might have been a little too much. Maybe something like to negative 0.8. So it's really a balancing act between how crazy you want your debris and how fast you want it to move and everything. And I think this is gonna be pretty good for some CG debris. I'm liking this effect. And if you want to constrain your debris even more, depending on your scene, if you have like some buildings in your scene, you can actually sketch out the environment of your buildings and then make those buildings collision objects as well to sort of, you know, contain your debris system. So for example, if I want to create some walls here, this can help to constrain our system, at least on the Y axis here. All right, so now that we've created the particle system for our debris, let's model the actual debris particles that we're going to instance on this particle system. You can use pretty much any CG debris model of your choice. However, for this specific tutorial, we're just going to be creating some paper debris, sort of like uh, some newspapers flying up on the street. So what I'm going to do here is 
I've just gone here to unsplash.com and I've searched for newspaper and Unsplash is just a website where you can get some free photos to use and I've just searched up newspaper and I'm just going to actually choose one of these photos here. I'm liking this one right here. We can actually just use this one photo and then UV unwrap a few different planes here on different parts of it. So I'll select this one and download a, we'll just use the medium version and I'll save this. I'll call it Unsplash Paper Debris. Save it under downloads. And now we can go back to Blender. We can go to file, import, images as planes. If you don't have images as planes uh, option available to you, then you can go to edit and preferences and go to your add-ons and then search for images as planes and make sure that this checkbox is selected. But I'll just go to file, import, images as planes. Now we'll find that picture that we downloaded right here and I'll click on import images as planes and you can see it comes into the center of our scene here and we can go to render view. Now we have this sort of basic plane with this texture on it and now what we're going to do is we're going to create a few different variations of this paper debris. So I'll go back into solid mode, just drag this over here and the first thing I'm going to do is go into edit mode and I'm actually going to go to edge subdivide and we'll subdivide this plane. We'll go about 10 times. And the reason we're doing this is so we can actually create some variation in the shape of this piece of paper so we can actually make it crumpled or something. So now that we've done that, we can go back into object mode and what I'll do, I'll go into UV editing with our paper selected and I'll go into render view on the right side here. And now we can select all of our vertices on the left side here and we can just sort of scale this until it fits one of the sections on our texture. So this is one piece of debris here. And now we can press Shift D, duplicate this, drag another piece over, and then we can go back into edit mode and choose a new area for this piece of paper. Maybe rotate it 90 degrees, something like this. And we'll just do this process a few more times. Remember, it doesn't really have to be perfect because these particles are gonna be moving so quickly. There's gonna be motion blur on them and such. So it's just a matter of creating some variation in your chunks of paper. All right, so we've created five different pieces of debris here, UV unwrapped on different portions of this texture here. So now we'll go back into layout mode. And what I want to do is just add some variation to the shape of these models. So I'll just select all of them here. I'll go into edit mode and I'll enable proportional editing right here. And now what I can do is I can select different vertices and scroll up and down to kind of crumple these pieces of paper in different ways that might be a little bit more organic. And you can even delete vertices if you want, play around with it until you get something that you like. All right, so now we have some variation in our debris here. Uh, one thing I do want to do is select all of our objects and shade them smooth. So I'll just go to Object Shade Smooth right here. And now that's looking much better. All right, so now that we have created our CG debris, let's uh, add them to their own specific collection here. And I'm also going to adjust their materials a bit as well. I'll select all of them here. I'll press M, add them to a new collection. We'll call it Debris. Okay. Now they're in their own collection here. And now really quickly, I'll just go to our shading tab and we'll go into rendered view. And I do want to switch to cycles just for the sake of this tutorial, but you can use Eevee as well. And I'm just going to plug in our color to our roughness. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press shift A. I'll just add a basic color ramp here. And I just want to add a little bit of reflectivity to them. Uh, I actually want to add a light really quick first. So I just want to add a little tiny bit of reflectivity. You can see what I'm getting here. Just uh, keep it subtle. You can see the kind of specularity we're getting on our paper debris now. You can create a more realistic material for these if you like, but they're going to be moving so quickly in the particle system. Uh, I don't think it should matter too much. This should be pretty good. So anyways, now it's time for the fun part. I'll go back into layout mode and I will select all of our CG debris. I'm just gonna put these kind of below our plane out of sight for now. So now we can just work on the particle system. So now what we want to do is we want to instance those pieces of debris on our particle system. So we'll select our particle system here, go to our particle system settings, and under render, we're going to go from render as halo, we're going to click on collection, and now we're going to select the instance collection, which is our debris collection. And now you can see here, we have our paper debris instance as our particles. We do want to increase the size of these a bit. So for scale, maybe we'll just do one, maybe a little bit less here, maybe 0.5. And I also wanna increase the scale randomness all the way to one, so it's as random as possible. And already now we're getting some CG paper debris. Now you can see our paper debris is all oriented in the same way. And the reason for that is because we need to enable the rotation option in our particle system. So I'll go ahead and select that and try this out again. Nothing happening yet. So what we want to do now is randomize the phase a little bit. So I'll go ahead and do that all the way to two. I'll also increase the random orientation of our particles. Then you can also play around with the phase here if you like. 
but I'll just leave that as is for now. You can also check the dynamic option here if you want a little bit more realistic particle simulation. And now right off the bat, we have some pretty nice looking debris. So we can go to rendered view. This is our effect. And at this point, it's a matter of lighting and rendering your assets and baking out this particle simulation. And one more thing we could actually do is we can just scale this up a little bit. There we go. And now we have a pretty nice looking CG debris storm here. Obviously you can play around with your force field settings, play around with your particle settings as well, but it's looking pretty awesome here. If you want to render this out with an alpha channel, all you have to do is go to your render properties tab under film, click on transparent, then under our output properties, we can render this as a PNG sequence with an alpha channel. Select your output over here. So I'll go ahead and do that. Create a new folder for this. We'll call this uh, paper debris field. Except we'll choose frame 1 to 250, render at 1920 by 1080p. For the sake of this tutorial, we can add an HDRI as our background. So just add an environment texture, just so we have a little bit more environmental lighting, give it a little more detail. I'll just use one of our presets here, a little bit nicer lighting on our paper debris. And that's looking pretty good, guys. You know, we have a nice bit of variation in our debris. Let's go ahead and bake out our particle system. So we'll select our particle system, go to particle properties, and then we'll go here to cache and we'll click on bake. And now we can scroll through at different parts of our timeline and see what our CG debris is looking like. And now to finish off this tutorial, I'll just press shift A. We'll add a camera to our scene. Just place this over here view from the camera, bring this back a little bit, make our focal length 35, and I will render with some motion blur here, 0.2, and now we can click on render and render animation, and Blender will export that sequence that you can use to composite into your scene. Anyways guys, that is it for this video. I hope it was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're interested in more visual effects content, and I'll see you next time.